What is good YouTube? Chris is Kicks here with another review and today we have the Red Wing Shoes 875 Heritage 6 inch mock toe boot in the Oreo Legacy colorway. Okay, so I have been after a pair of Red Wing boots for quite some time, um, but I have been putting it off as they are a very expensive piece of footwear. Uh, as you can see from the size label, these retailed at £240, uh, £239, um, and they virtually never go on sale, so I've been holding off um, just for when I had some extra cash. Uh, I didn't have some extra cash, but there was an offer I couldn't refuse. Uh, a site in the UK, End Clothing, had a coupon code that provided 20% off site-wide uh, as a spring 2016 summer promotion. Um, so I used that coupon code and that dropped these down from around 240 to 191 or 192 So almost £50 off a pair of Red Wing boots it was an offer that I couldn't refuse and I had to pick these up. Um, for those of you that are unfamiliar, Red Wing boots... Um, are apparently a very high quality manufactured boot, very durable, very good quality and a very old company. Uh, so first off let's get into the box. You have a grey and red box with the sizing information on one side. You have a red back to the box with Red Wing shoes. The Red Wing shoes logo on one side of the box. And on the roof of the box we have Red Wing shoes established 1905. And on the opening side, you do actually have a carry handle. Um, but this side isn't very secure, so I suppose you wouldn't really carry them like this. Otherwise, the box is just going to fall open anyway. Let's get into the boots. Okay, prior to these boots, the only boots I've ever worn would be Timberland boots. Um, but I've heard so much good things about Red Wing boots that I've wanted a pair for so long now. Um, and these will probably replace my Timberlands as my wintertime boot for when the rain hits and it's not great weather for sneakers. Okay, so the mock toe is, for those of you that don't know what a mock toe is, it is the rim of stitching that around the toe area. Rather than a rounded toe, you do have this little line of stitching which gives a little lip to the front of the shoe. Um, the Oreo Legacy, I believe that is the colorway, um, is and the model number of 875, I believe is the original version or original silhouette of this shoe that Red Wing produce. Um, and it is the one that I've liked the most. They do have darker variants um, of this colorway, or well, not colorway, but model. No, not this model. They do have different model numbers that are almost similar to this with a darker variant. Um, but yeah, this is the one that I have liked the most. Alright. Um, the leather of the shoe is out of the box, quite stiff and rigid. Um, but I did go into the store and try a pair on. And the pair that I tried on in store is super, super soft. So I do understand after maybe a month of wearing the leather quality uh, kicks it in and these will soften up and become like a second skin a super soft footwear um, so I'm really looking forward to breaking these in and seeing how soft they become uh, you do have I believe it's oil stained or oil treated leather to provide provide that water and stain repellent uh, which gives the shoe a lovely um, faded look in some areas so as you can see just around this area it's a little bit lighter than the rest of the shoe and you'll probably with wear see the upside of it being a lot darker than the the, the lower part of the shoe. Um, Red Wing do sell treatment products for the shoe and I believe for this model they recommend the mink oil treatment uh, which is like a little metal container containing the mink oil which you I think rub into the leather. Um, for the moment I'm not going to treat the shoes I'm going to let them live for maybe six to months to a year let them break in and then give them a bit of TLC to revive them because um, I want to see how the patterns of the shoe um, sort of fade and bring character into the shoe once it starts creasing. Laces provided with the shoe is the sort of typical orange and <clears throat> oh, sorry, orange and yellow boot laces. Um uh, not the greatest quality of laces, they're quite stiff and quite thin. Uh, and especially the the end part um which I don't I don't tie my boots up. Um <clears throat> then we need to clear my throat. 
but the plastic that was used for the end of the lace is super soft and bendy it's not a, a proper end of lace all right front of the shoe view you can see on the size or the, on the tongue label you can see the back of the size label which is stitched in with that black stitching so we'll flip that round and show you the other side so you do have the red wing shoes label with the model 875 UK 9 which is a US 10 and the model 875 size width for D uh, apparently they do come in different widths but I was only able to find the standard width online medial side of the shoe pretty similar to the lateral side you do have this nice contrasting stitching in both white and black um, all around the shoe um, it gives a nice sort of flow to the shape of the shoe um, the outsole of the shoe is this beautiful off-white um, waffle style print with the Red Wing shoes logo in the middle. Now I have seen a lot of Red Wing soles that, especially in the heel area with some heel drag, seriously wear down pretty quick. Um, if you wear the boots daily that is. Um, but from the, what I understand, Red Wing Shoes provides a repair service for all their boots. Um, I haven't looked into prices, but you can, unlike most other boots like Timberlands and such, you can get these these shoes resold. Um, so they should last you a lifetime as long as you don't make a massive tear or rip into the upper of the shoe. Uh, you can resold these shoes as many times as you want. I understand. So yeah, um, the off white colorway is on the midsole as well uh, and I definitely think it's a different look to the shoes normally you would see a black midsole or a black sole it will get a little bit dirtier but again that's part of the character of the boot um, on the lip of the shoe we do have the lip the, the opening of the shoe you do have a slight little lining around just to give it a little bit of comfort on the back of your tendon your Achilles around the area the back of the ankle now one thing I want to talk about is sizing for these boots. Um, I have seen some different information online. A lot of people, when I was researching what size to buy, suggested going half a size or even a whole size down uh, from your regular boot size because they said these shoes fit quite big um, and they do break in and become a lot softer. Now, I went to the Red Wing store, tried on a pair. The, the pair that I went for was half a size down in the store and the toe area was excruciatingly tight. So this little area around here was pinching in so much that I was definitely not gonna wear half a size down. Uh, room space, my toe was pretty much close to the, the, the tip of the shoe. Uh, I like a little bit more room in the toe box. So I went true to size on the recommendation of the Red Wing salesman who said that the, the side of it that I was feeling pinching was a little bit too much than what it should be. So I went true to size. Now, some of you in a moment are gonna start crying and screaming at what you're about to see next. Um, basically, when I tried the pair on in the store, they must have been tried on a lot of times because they were quite soft and it was pretty easy for me to get my foot into the shoe. Um, and then when I ordered a pair online and these shoes arrived, I was not able to get my foot in there at all. As you can see, the area where the foot or the shoe opens for you to actually get your foot in is super narrow. Um, there is virtually enough space for me to fit my hand uh, in there. And there's no way I could fit the, the heel of my foot and the width of my foot. I've got quite a high arch anyway. There was no way I could fit my foot in there. I tried... Um, for at least half an hour stomping the foot and I was actually considering going to return the boots and get half a size up um, and go up half a size and I was just in the verge of packing up the box and sending them back and I put my foot on the heel of this on the on the, the bottom of the shoe and I could see that the way my foot was lining up with the shoe was was almost a perfect fit and I know that's not the correct way to, to, to see the size of the shoe but I mean the shoe lined up with the set the shape of my foot so it should be a perfect fit so in the end I switched to a pair of super skinny like office style socks almost like the uh, almost as thin as a pair of tights and got a shoe horn and I, I spent at least another 10 minutes agonizingly squeezing my foot into the shoe finally got my foot into the shoe and the shoes were a perfect fit size wise as in the length of the shoe so really, the problem is with the opening of the shoe. 
because once I had the shoes on, they were a perfect fit. They didn't pinch. They didn't. Um, they were a nice snug fit, but they weren't too tight. I had enough room in the toe box. So I wasn't getting any heel slippage. So I knew the shoes were a right, the right size lengthwise. The just a, the opening to get my foot in there was way too narrow. Um, so I didn't want to go half a size up because then they'll be too loose. Uh, I didn't want to sacrifice a loose pair of boots just for the sake of getting them on. So what I did on day one of buying a 240 pound pair of boots is to take a, uh, a craft knife or a Stanley blade, whatever you want to call them, box cutter, and slice the tongue apart. So as you can see, the tongue is joined to give that waterproof effect all the way up, almost to the, the top of the hole. So you've got like one hole's width uh, where the tongue originally started from. I sliced about an inch open so you can see the tongue instead of starting at the second hole comes down to just before the fourth hole and I put about just short of an inch slice on each side of the tongue on both shoes just to open the tongue up and as you can see now the tongue opens way wider I can much more I can get my foot in there much more easily even wearing a pair of boot socks um, so yeah, this was a measure that I had to take. Uh, you, I could have easily sent these shoes back and gone half a size up, um, but then I would have had a loose pair of boots that wouldn't have fit me as well. Um, I could easily have struggled getting my foot in there for maybe a month or two while the shoes broke in, and hopefully with the leather softening up, I would have um, been able to get it in there a lot easier. But I was only able to get my foot in there wearing a thin pair of office-style socks, not your regular sort of athletic sock or boot sock. So I didn't really want to do that for over a month, struggle every day uh, with a shoehorn and stomp. So yeah, as unfortunate as it is and as upsetting that may be to some of you that I sliced up a pair of boots on the first day, um, for me, that was the best thing to do to be able to wear these boots. Um, some of you might think that's crazy and I'll probably get a few comments saying you're crazy. Why would you slice up a pair of 240 pound boots? But yeah, that's what I had to do to get them on. And now they're a perfect fit. That's pretty much it for the review. Uh, one last thing will be the inside of the shoe is a beautiful leather insole for the shoe. Uh, with You can see nice leather lining of the shoe and you can see all the interior panels and stitching. Quality craftsmanship that was made um, for the shoe. Uh, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you want to follow me on any social media, uh, Twitter and Instagram it is Chris underscore S underscore Ramos. But clickable links for those will be in the description. Uh, this is not my usual type of review. Normally it's sneaker reviews. So if you do want to see some more sneaker reviews, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Share, like, comment and all that good stuff. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Peace.